talk next about that ver that root key that I said all of this is, is based on. Just to say the endorsement key. So I mentioned earlier this morning, the endorsement key is effectively the TPM's unique identifier. It's really a lifetime identifier, except in some special cases. Um, but we don't use it directly, in large part because of those privacy concerns where people were really worried about having all of their information tracked. So we use the endorsement key to establish trust in the TPM's identities, which are the practical things we use for certification, for signing TPM reports, for establishing trust and all the other keys. So any time that we say we trust the TPM, it does in fact come down to trust in the endorsement key. The endorsement key belongs to a good TPM. This other key is in the same TPM as the endorsement key. Therefore, we know that this key is in a good TPM. Um, and this key is in a good TPM. Therefore, we know that the, these PCRs are reliable. This key is in a good TPM. Therefore, we know that it will protect my data. So every time that I, as a remote party, say I trust that TPM, it's because I trust the endorsement key in the end. So, there is a concept of a revocable endorsement key that you know, I, I create and then later on I say, never mind, I don't want it anymore, I get rid of it, I can create a new one. We're not actually sure if this command has been implemented yet. Um, it theoretically exists, most people don't use them, they just go ahead and say the endorsement key is a lifetime key. It's, and if you change TPM owners, you erase all the identities, but the certification that this is a good TPM sticks around. So where does it come from? Um, according to the Trusted Computing Group, in their beautiful little specification of 600 pages, the oh. TPM, it's actually more like eight, um, the TPM manufacturer creates the endorsement key as part of the manufacturing process, either by having the TPM generated itself, or by creating the key off of the TPM and injecting it. The TCG doesn't care which, as long as the, the key is unique to the TPM. Um, the manufacturer would create an endorsement credential that it would put into the non-volatile storage of the TPM, um, which basically says, as a manufacturer, I created this TPM and this is its endorsement key. Um, there's also supposed to be a platform credential that ties the endorsement key to what kind of platform it is. These mostly don't exist because there's really only one kind of platform today. Um, and anyone who has the manufacturer's key can verify that this is a good TPM as long as they trust the manufacturer. It's beautiful. Uh, no, if the clear instruction is, is used, the EK is not lost. The endorsement key is the only key that is not cleared on a clear, but even if it were, or even if you have a revocable key that is revoked, you can always create a new one. Um, it is possible to break a TPM permanently, uh, there are commands to do that because of the privacy advocates, but it's actually really hard to do unless your TPM is broken, which a disturbing number of them are. I believe Zeno has in fact managed to break some TPMs, and if not, I know Corey Gallenberg has, so there you go. Um, yes. Some of them are buggy. But fundamentally, the endorsement key isn't the, or lack thereof, does not break TPMs, and clearing a TPM doesn't break a TPM, it just erases your data. So creating a new endorsement key is actually really straightforward. But the intent is for the endorsement key to come from the manufacturer, um, and anyone who unpacks the machine can immediately trust the TPM, because hey look, it's got a key, it's signed by the manufacturer, we're all good, right? No, we're really not. Because most TPM manufacturers do not include an endorsement key at all. Of the manufacturers that do include an endorsement key, most of them don't include an endorsement credential. So, yeah. um, and even if there were an endorsement credential, exactly how we would verify it is unclear because it's not as though any of those manufacturers publish their uh, endorsement credential signing keys in any reasonable purpose. We wrote Infineon, which is one of the TPM manufacturers, to ask, a, ask them, so, we've heard you include endorsement keys with your TPMs. We've heard even rumors that you have a credential. Can we get, where would we find your public key to verify it? Infineon said, ask your platform manufacturer. So we emailed Dell, and Dell sent us to Wave Systems, which is a company that sells TPM services. So 
we're not really sure how you're supposed to verify that even if it existed, which means we can't really rely on this nicely designed process even if we trusted the manufacturers of TPMs to also be good at maintaining key material, which not everybody does. Just because we trust them to do hardware right doesn't necessarily mean we trust them to do certification right. So Matthew asks, apart from the fact that Intel, AMD, et cetera, are American companies, why should we trust them? That they are not secretly keeping track of the endorsement key? Answer, there's no reason whatsoever. Except as much as what is their business purpose. Um, it is worth noting, Intel and AMD are not TPM manufacturers. TPM manufacturers are companies like Atmel, Broadcom, Infineon. You've never heard of most of them, probably, because as far as I know, this is most of what they do. Um, they probably do some other low-level uh, chip. I, I know Broadcom does other chips. Some of them are Chinese. Some of them are German. Um, it really depends on your TDM. So a lot of people have been asking that question of why should we trust the TDM manufacturers to, to not keep the endorsement key. And the answer is, we don't have a very good reason. So it might be a good thing that most of them don't come with an endorsement key after all. Um, but the ones that do, we are pretty much stuck with. We better hope that they're using a good procedure. And if you really care about trusting your TPM manufacturer and trusting your TPM manufacturer's key handling process, we highly encourage you to talk to said TPM manufacturer or find one with a trusted foundry. Good luck. I'm sorry. That's a very depressing way to answer that question. But the short answer is there's not really a market pressure to verify the TPM manufacturer's key handling processes. There's not market pressure to have a trusted foundry which has established processes. If anybody actually pushed for it, if there were you know, a number of large corporations or whatever that said we want to make sure our TPM manufacturers follow a specific process that gets certified and inspected, maybe they could. Nobody has so far because these are cheap parts that are just ubiquitous. Nobody's cared enough. So, what do we do instead? So, given that we don't have an endorsement key, and even if we did, we might not want it, um, we generally create an endorsement key during provisioning whenever possible. And given that we don't have an endorsement credential, whether or not we have an endorsement key, it's going to be up to us to create the endorsement credential for all of our TPMs, rather than relying on the manufacturer to have created one or for the manufacturer, even if they did create one, to actually hang on to their root signing key with any kind of reliability. 